Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We begin tonight with breaking news. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says a semi slid off I-29, went through a fence, and into a house. It happened just about a half hour ago near 32nd Avenue South in Fargo. That's where Valley News Team's Ashley Bissett joins us live from the scene with more. Ashley? The house, the house behind me is still standing. That was not uh, touched at all. It was mainly the backyard. It slid through a fence, the semi-trailer behind me, and into the backyard. The house does not look to be touched, and crews and officials are behind me investigating exactly what home. What happened? Fargo Police, fi uh, Fargo Fire Department, as well as State Patrol is on scene investigating everything that is going on. And as you can see, this tr semi came off the uh, interstate a very long way. You could see it had knocked out numerous fence posts, numerous trees before finally coming to a stop in the backyard of this home. What we know from the Fargo Fire Department, what they responded to was a semi in the ditch, more of in a backyard and it hit the fences. There was no injuries in the home, but the male that was driving the semi was taken to the hospital. Fire department tells me when they arrived on scene, the male was unconscious. They don't know if weather had a, a involvement or this. They're thinking it's more medical. Now, while I was pulling up to the scene, the ambulance was seen leaving the scene, taking that male to the hospital. We're waiting to, to find out more information from the officials here. They're in the very beginning stages of this investigation of figuring out what exactly happened. But today was full of crashes, full of accidents, and full of people running to the curbs and ditches. Talking with Fargo police, they say it happens every year about this time when the first winter snowfall hits. Now, Fargo police and other police agencies were just as busy but also the tow companies were busy pulling people out and rescuing them. One tow company said their business doubled today. We pretty much couldn't answer the phones fast enough. <laughs> um, it's just a variety of problems. A lot of people uh, finding problems with traction, um, sliding off into the ditch, even though there's not a lot of snow in the ditches. Aggressive towing and recovery manager Thomas Linseth says they saw about 35 calls during the morning. They typically see 15. They say a lot of people were going too fast for the conditions and responded to a lot of people hitting the curbs. Linseth explains they were prepared and had crews ready for the influx of calls during the first snowfall. After the first one kind of easing into the second one, people kind of get their feet back under them and they kind of get better from there. North Dakota State Patrol as well as Minnesota State Patrol responded to a lot of crashes on the interstate today. They said a lot of people were going too fast and not giving enough space between them and the car ahead of them. As we said before, North Dakota State Patrol is responding at this accident here off of the interstate into the backyard of a home right here in the thir behind near 32nd Avenue in the community homes back there. We're going to have more throughout our news coverage this evening, so stay with Valley News Live for the latest in South Fargo. Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. It definitely is a slick one out there, Ashley. Thank you. Well, the skies have cleared now. But it's getting cold. Let's toss it over to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson to see how long it's going to go and how low it'll go tonight. Hutch? Thanks so much. As we look into the uh, area throughout the evening, we've had wind, we've had snow, slippery roads, as just mentioned by Ashley, and the wind causing some damage. Take a look at this photo shared this morning, waking up to a tree laying on your house and power lines. A lot of noisy winds last night. Jenny Johnson, hope that tree and the damage is minimal there. And take a look at this, Red Lake Falls with some snow on the streets, and many of us started with this. Not a lot of snow, around an inch in the FM area, but with the winds and the gusts, it really got stuck onto the roads and caused slippery conditions. Peak winds as high as 61 miles per hour. This is since midnight. Since midnight, Fargo's had gusts near 50, as has Grand Forks. Grafton, very windy, 53 mile per hour peak gusts. Snow continues, but it seems to be decreasing in aerial coverage. I think we'll have a chance for some more flurries tonight, but the wind continues. Stephanie, the wind advisory is with us until 8 o'clock, and then after the wind subsides, the cold takes hold. We're going to see some lows in the single digits overnight. We'll have more on that, but be prepared for a very chilly night of weather ahead, and the wind, it'll be taking a little bit of a break. I can just feel the chill now. It's cold. All right, thanks, mm -hmm. Hutch. Well, winter also made a dramatic entrance in the Northern Valley today. The Grand Forks Police Department reported 23 fender benders around the city this morning. 
And as Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us, it was more of the same as the heaviest snow and the wind made its way into northwestern Minnesota. The wind howled through most of the night and quickly brought in winter. It was clear at 5 a.m., but by 6 a.m., it already looked like a scene from January. Were you out this morning driving already? Yes, it was. What was it like? Fine. This what? is at like 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock this morning? Mm-hmm. It's not so good now. No, it's not so great. <laughs> a little nervous. <laughs> Welcome to winter. In town, roads quickly became compacted and icy, and many folks found themselves in the middle of a close call. Several drivers like this one took this curve too fast, but were lucky enough to slide through a restaurant driveway without crashing into anything. Veterans of all this take it in stride. I mean, it's normal for Minnesota. You just so. got to get used to it again, huh? Yep, that's right. All right. So like I tell everybody, I'd rather put on layers than take it all off. <laughs> so. so you like winter? Yeah. But what do you like about it? Um, the snow. I'm playing in it. Out on Highway 2, passing vehicles hitting pillow drifts caused a bit of snow fog. There were patches of dry road and icy road. Right now, I'm at Mentor, 22 miles east of Crookston along Highway 2. At daybreak, it's clear our warm fall is over. We made it to November 19th, but winter has arrived here in northwestern Minnesota. A little too early. I could stay a little, way a little bit longer. <laughs> So are, are you a winter sports lover or don't really care? Yeah, I love winter. Uh, just can stay away a little bit longer. And while some folks will tell you they love winter, you'll find they may have ulterior motives. So what do you think of winter finally getting here? Perfect. You like we're it? Going to, we're flying out to go to Arizona. <laughs> Can't take the pressure. <laughs> In Polk County, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Now you can stay up to date on all the weather conditions anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team weather app to get the latest weather conditions. Even follow the radar live. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store. In other news now, three men have been arrested in connection to a string of car break-ins and burglaries in South Fargo. Fargo police posted about the incident on their Facebook page and say that Kalar Zimmel, Carter Schulke and Noah Croker were arrested for burglary and unlawful entry into motor vehicles. The Post says the crimes took place in the areas of Rose Creek and Oak Creek. Police say that multiple things were stolen, including GPS units, hunting equipment and ammunition, and that some of the items were returned to their owners shortly after the arrests were made. Fargo police are now confirming a man with a face mask flashed a handgun before taking off with money and some merchandise from inside a store. Police were called just before midnight to the Phillips Travel Center. An employee was closing the store when the man entered the store and demanded money. Police set up a perimeter and used a canine to track the suspect. The dog picked up a scent just for a short time, but then lost it. Investigators are going over a surveillance video from the area. They're hoping to find more clues. But they do need your help. The suspect's described as a white man about 5'10", wearing a face mask with blue jeans and a white sweatshirt. Small businesses want to be on your radar along with big box stores this holiday season. And if Black Friday tends to be a big box day, the day after that is being focused on not so big stores. Today, Mayor Mahoney made it official, declaring Saturday the 28th Small Business Saturday. Today's festivities included a coffee kickoff honoring and recognizing the entrepreneurs who you probably won't always see listed on the New York Stock Exchange. With larger companies that are really promoting their big Black Friday sales, um, that sort of takes some of the attention away from these smaller businesses. So to have this organized and recognized by the community um, gives us that much more of an edge to get those customers to come to smaller businesses. Census data shows there are more than 4,100 small businesses in the metro area that have 20 or fewer employees. They employ nearly 18,000 workers with a payroll of $650,000. It's the last hurrah for one of the oldest family-owned businesses in the upper Midwest. The owners are planning to close their doors. Today, Strauss Clothing opened its doors for a final sale. It'll stay open until it's all sold. All the Stern brothers and sisters from Minneapolis and California are returning to Fargo to help. Strauss has had clothing stores in the region for 136 years. The fourth generation owners say they're closing because of economic factors,
Both are at retirement age and none of the kids want to take over. Remember William Hallman from Moorhead? He is the adorable weather kid who broadcasted with Hutch Johnson several years ago right here on Valley News Live and his forecast went viral. He's in studio again. That's coming up next. And some former neighbors of ours from the Fargo area have moved to Colorado. They had snow too. The minions did not like it. Your forecast looks a little drier. Details are next.